Alrighty, in today's video, I'm going to show you guys how to play Omega Ruby and Afro Sapphire on the PC with the Citra emulator. Show you guys how to play this game in, four, in 4K with maximum settings. Now, this tutorial is going to be basically simple and easy. Should get you no less than three minutes to get this emulator set up. First thing you're going to need to do is go to the website Citra slash emu.org. I'll leave everything in the description down below for you guys can check it out. First thing you're going to do is go to the download page and then you're going to download for Windows 64. And after that, that's got running up. You're going to open it up, the EXE. It picks next for everything. Next, get the nightly build. Basically all this. I'm just going to accept everything. Next. Next, and you install. Wait a couple seconds. After that, you're good to go. You basically install the Citra emulator onto your PC, and the way you find it is to go to Citra. I like to find it through right here. I open this up. As you see, I had the previous game, Pokemon X. Now, the first thing you guys want to want to do is configure. Everything should be left on default. Everything is pretty good with this emulator. I think this is for online play, I believe. Yeah, this is definitely for online. The debug tab, that should be left on uh, default. The UI, that should be left on default too. This should be left on default. The only really thing we're really changing is the controls. In the graphics tab. Now, if you want to play in native 4K, 9 9x and native 10 10x, and basically let you play in 4K. If you have a strong enough PC, you can basically play in 9x and 10K. I mean, in 10x. Those are basically 4K. I'm put 9x. Um, if you want to mess around with the texture filters, make them really really, really nice. I do anime 4K ultra fast. If your PC is built for that, I'm not gonna use that right now because my PC, I know my PC is built for it, but I prefer not to use it. And then mostly using these things are, are game dependent for certain games. Well, the layout I like to use, I like to use a large screen, not single screen. And let me go to the advanced tab. Now the, now, the stuff you see in the advanced tab is pretty game dependent. So certain games will need certain layouts, but I'm pretty sure for Pokemon, you don't need. You should, you should leave it on default if you're playing one Pokemon. And the only thing you're really changing is the resolution and the screen layout, how you want it. And then next is the controller input. Now... I'm gonna plug in my controller, which is an Xbox One controller. I'll say the best thing to do use for this emulator is anything that's window dependent. Like Windows can easily read it. Like Windows can easily read an Xbox 360 controller and Xbox One controller or anything that's X input. Windows can easily read that. And then you can, I believe, you can customize your file for your for your controller, like say for example, press A, B, A, B, uh, X, I already did this already, so I'm not gonna redo it again. It doesn't make sense for me to do that. And after you got that set up, you're all good to go. Now if you, now this process, this next step is for people who have a really good graphics card, like say for example, you have Nvidia, that's a really good graphics card, you can basically customize your settings and make it even much more a lot more powerful when you're playing games on this emulator go to your nvidia's um graphics tab now this only works for nvidia users if you have something like amd i'm not pretty sure it's gonna work because you know amd is not too good with emulators and and amd is really dependent on the emulator using if it's gonna be good or not so if you have nvidia you're, you're pretty safe on using this all right, so there's basically two settings I like to use on adjust image settings with preview, previews. I like to use, sometimes I use the last one 
depending on the situation and how I feel about the, which game it is. But mostly I use the second one, use the advanced 3D image settings. That's the most safest route I usually take. And then the next one, I just go to the third, third one and I enabled my graphics card. If it's set to auto select, recommended or CPU, don't use it, just use your graphics card. And then the third is image DD settings. Now you guys can copy everything I have right here to make sure you get the best performance of possible. I set it to certain settings to basically increase my performance and push it to the maximum power as much as I can. So I'm just using through my graphics card. Now you guys can pause the video and see which one I have. I'm not going to go too in detail which one, like why I selected it and why is it good. Is This is just the best performance that my PC can take and push it to this, push it to the limit basically. And then obviously you're picking the high end performance in the video processor. You go to program settings. Now this one is, I believe it's not going to be automatically added to Citra, but the way how you basically add it is just go to add, pick the Citra EXE right here, add select the program, make sure everything is good. Like you preset it before you press apply. Wait a couple. And now you're all good to go. Basically, basically good to go. Now, since you have everything set up, controller, the settings you want it, if you want to play in 4K, and you try to push it to the maximum power using your graphics card, I'll show you guys how to use that. If you're, if you have an NVIDIA graphics card, now you guys are gonna need the game. Do keep in mind, only do this if you have the digital copy or hard, hard copy of Omega Ruby or Alpha Sapphire on the 3DS. If you guys don't have the hard copy or digital copy, I do not condone you guys downloading games. Only do this. I suggest you guys buying the game and then you can play the game on PC because you have proof that you own the actual game and you have every right to emulate the game on your PC or you can dump the game. But I know a lot of people don't want to do not want to dump their game and to dump your game you needs to have a hacked 3DS and a lot of people don't have hacked 3DS and people, some people don't want to go through that process process of brick risking brisk, bricking their 3DS a, a, um, as a raw file. So you're going to need something like seven zip or seven zip or one to open it up. I use one So that's what I'm going to use basically how you do that. Make a new folder. Just be on the safe side and just call it Omega. Cause that's why I have Omega Ruby and now uh, just go through it quick, drag and drop the file. So now go through, it's going to take a couple seconds to drag and drop it to the new folder. Should take no less, no less than two minutes. All right. And then we're good to go. Basically how you add this new game. Goes to your desktop. Go down to the Omega folder. Just select the folder, highlight it. And then there you go. You got the game. Now you're going to be booting this up. There you go. That's how it basically works. Can't show too much due to the fact that I'm not trying to get my video claimed by Nintendo because they watch my channel like a Hawkeye. But if I don't show gameplay, I'm good to I'm basically good. This video will be basically good. If you see anything, if you notice anything is cut out or a certain part in the video is missing, is due to the fact that my video got claimed and I had to cut it out. But that's basically it. That's how you play the game. That's how you set it up on the search emulator. Pretty simple and easy, straight to the point. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe if you guys are new because I'm making more video guides like this in the near future. Stay tuned for this. Yeah, that's basically it. Stay tuned for more videos, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace out.